Emmy, myself and I, follows the story of a woman struck down with Emmy and fibromyalgia in the prime of her life as a successful TV psychic medium. Left with nothing but two dustbin bags, demons from the past and her two dogs, she embarks on an incredible journey, grieving her old life and begrudgingly accepting guidance from angels and spirit guides after losing her faith. She finds a reason to live from the brink of suicide by experiencing celestial miracles and a passion to write. This inspirational self-help spiritual memoir highlights a chronic illness pandemic sweeping through the world that society has shamefully neglected. Her esoteric voice representing the millions missing brings hope, faith and a definitive strength of the human spirit during the injustice of one life-altering episode after another. And that woman was me, Nikki Allen. I've been taking on board a lot of comments and emails concerning my book and of course there's a lot of you that obviously have chronic illness or have problems in reading my book. And because I'm not some amazing celebrity who will instantly get an audio version, I thought I'm going to do everything I can to bring this book to the people that need it. So coming soon, very soon, you'll be able to get exclusive access through YouTube to my book where I will be narrating it to you. So you'll be seeing me read my own book and it will enable you to have access to the book if you can't concentrate on reading or if you have any disabilities that stop you from enjoying reading books, especially my memoir, which everybody should read. <laughs> So for $9.99, you'll be able to get exclusive access to the whole of my book, which will be in three parts, and you'll be able to listen along, whiling away the hours, while I take you through the most incredible journey a human could possibly go through. And just to give you a little taster, I think I might just read my prologue, just to show you where it all kind of began. Because believe me, when I now look back at this book, I can't even recognise my own self. I have found nothing but strength, peace, abundance, spiritual awareness. My demons have left me and I've never been so contented in all my life, including being whole and complete. So if you want to learn how to do this and if you want to learn how I prove that we are never alone on this planet, please order this book. If you don't have any disabilities and you want to read it yourself, it is available at Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk. However, if you'd like the narrated version, it will be coming very soon. So sit back and enjoy the prologue. I know that I have these dulcet Essex tones, but at least you're going to be able to listen to it. Here's just a taster of something that's taken from the middle of the book. As I lay looking out onto the sun-bleached Devonshire Valley... I felt that familiar yearning to be walking through it. Houses were cheerily dotted along the hills that led to the Dartmouth estuary, promising human life and interaction. In essence, any normal person would have let out an exhilarated sigh. They would have smiled and thought how lucky they were to be seeing such an awesome sight in such a beautiful location. Well, no, not I. I resented those people busily leading their lives. To me, they might as well have been aliens residing on the moon. I had not seen anyone apart from the postman for months. I looked out to the swaying eucalyptus trees and allowed the silent tears to continue their steady stream down my cheeks. My eye sockets complained at this familiar motion, continually working overtime, nothing stemming the pain. They sang out in a voice that joined the rest of my body chorus. Every nerve, fibre, joint, muscle, tendon, bone and sinew roared, demanding attention. The insomnia drove me to near insanity, along with the most demoralising depression. I was pretty much starving most of the time, as to even think of preparing food was about as possible as climbing Kilimanjaro on roller skates. I had bailiffs knocking at my unanswered door and merciless bankers demanding money. The people who I thought were friends turned their back or simply got bored of me. I was 44 years old, living like a 95-year-old invalid. My soul, body, mind and spirit. And of course, Teddy will have to interrupt this flow, but I'm going to carry on. And for those who know me, you know that they always, always interrupt. My soul, body, mind and spirit were slowly dying 
and my God, did I welcome death every single day. Death's sublime taste of freedom from this eternal imprisonment was all I could yearn for. The thought of residing in heaven was my only reprieve. I had nothing left, nothing to live for. I was lonely, terrified of my non-existent future and grieved my old successful life. The rawness of loss never left me. It just continued to stab me with a hot, sharpened poker whenever I thought about it all. The flight had gone. In fact, that's wrong. I'm glad this isn't a professional recording and it's just me. The fight had gone. <laughs> and the flight, to be honest with you. The flight had definitely, definitely gone. The battles of my mind and body raged on with no imminent victory. I was standing on the precipice, facing an abyss of darkness, uncertainty and fear. How could I step back and prevent falling into a void of blackness and change direction? I couldn't as far as I was concerned. I drew the curtains, got back into bed and dreamt of suicide. And that's what most of my days were for five years whilst I was incarcerated in my own bedroom. So if you're interested in this fantastic story of mine, please, please, please email me at nickyallen333 at gmail.com to get yourself in the waiting list to order the narrated version of my book. I really hope this reaches the people it can and to anybody that's ever experienced darkness, ever experienced something that they feel they can never get out of, please read this because you really will know that you are never, ever alone. Thanks for listening.